Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the difference between finance lease and operating lease. Finance lease, sometimes called a capital lease. Now, before we proceed, I would like to remind you what we did in the prior session. We talked about what is a lease, advantages of leasing, and the players in the leasing industry. Now we're going to look at what is a finance or operating lease. Regardless whether a company classify a lease as a finance lease or as an operating lease, in both situation, leases are capitalized. Now, why am I saying this? Because in the past, and hopefully you don't remember this because this was maybe the, a few years ago, the old rules, under operating lease, you did not have to capitalize the lease. But what does capitalize mean? It means every time you have a lease, you have to put an asset on the book and a corresponding liability. Well, based on the old rules, which is you don't have to worry about, but the reason I'm giving you the old rules because it's going to help you in understanding why we do certain things. Based on the old rules, if the lease was an operating lease, you did not have to have an asset and a liability, if that was the case. Now, you have to have an asset and a liability, whether you have a finance lease or an operating lease. Now, why would why would that be important? Because companies we would, would try everything to do to classify the lease as an operating lease. This way, they don't have to put the liability or the asset. Now, they like the asset, but they don't like the liability. So they prefer to keep both out. That's not an option anymore. All leases now are capitalized. Also, I'm going to start by talking from a lessee's perspective, from the renter. And we'll talk about the lessor later. Whether we have a finance or an operating lease, and we're going to see the rules shortly. Here's what you need to know. For a finance lease, the lessee will have two expenses. They will have an expense called interest expense. Obviously, a lease is like a loan. You're going to have to incur interest expense on the lease, and you're going to be using the effective interest rate method. So that effective interest rate method, that's one expense. The second expense is once you have an asset, you're going to depreciate. You're going to amortize the asset on the right to use using the straight line method. So you're going to have two separate expenses. For operating leases, you're going to have one expense. And you're going to recognize interest expense. Again, you have a liability. You have to recognize interest expense and you're going to amortize the right of use asset. However, both of these expenses will be show, showed showing in one expense called total lease expense. And it's going to be the same from period to period. So notice we have technically here under operating lease two expenses, but we show them as one expense. Under finance lease, we're going to have two expenses. Just make sure you're aware of this when we start to work with actual examples. So how do we classify a lease, whether it's an operating lease or a finance lease? Because that's the that's the purpose of the session. Well, we're going to look at substance over form. We don't care what's in the agreement. We would, we're going to look at the substance of the agreement. If the agreement, if the arrangement is effectively a purchase of the underlying asset, then we have a finance lease. So if the agreement technically gives uh, purchase the asset rather than rent the asset, then we have a lease. How do we know that we purchase the asset? There's a transfer of control or ownership. How do we know that we have a transfer of control or ownership? Well, simply put, the lessee takes ownership of the asset. Basically, they take it, they keep it, or they consume the substantial portion of the underlying asset. If they don't take ownership of it, they used it. They used most of it. Like basically the asset is no longer useful for someone else or for the asset life. Technically, they used all its life, all its economic life. Well, if not, if, if, if we don't take control or ownership of the asset, then we have an operating lease. Again, we look at substance over form. Now, we have to be a little bit more specific. I have not answered the question. I'm just telling you what do we do, whether we have an operating lease or a finance lease. Well, we're going to look at condition. Actually, it's one condition or it could be many conditions, but you just need one condition to have a finance lease. If you have a finance lease, then it's a finance lease. If it's not a finance lease, it's going to be an operating lease. Now, what are those condition or conditions? You just need one. Before we look at the conditions, most likely you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate if you're listening to my lectures, which is great. You have arrived. I can help you. Visit farhatlectures.com. I have additional resources, lectures organized by your CPA review course, organized by your college course, multiple choice questions, true, false, exercises that's going to help you do better. I don't replace your CPA review course. I'm going to help you. I'm going to be in addition to that resource. Connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. 
like this recording share it with other if it's helping you it's going to help other connect with me on instagram facebook twitter and reddit so what are the conditions that will help us determine whether a lease is a finance lease well the first thing we have to have is an agreement between the two parties and that agreement cannot be cancelable and if it's cancelable there's a large penalty but simply put we have a legitimate agreement and we must meet one notice one of five conditions or what we call test remember only one so what are those tests or those conditions that we need to be aware of first condition transfer of ownership test what does that mean we have to ask ourselves after the lease end do we transfer the asset to the lessee by the end of the term so once the this is over would the lessee would the renter take ownership if the answer is no i'm sorry if the answer is yes we have a finance lease if the answer is no we don't have a finance lease think if you rent an apartment if you rent an apartment after one two three years the ownership goes back to the to the owner you don't own it versus sometime when you lease a car at the end of its life although it's a lease they will give you the, the keys because we basically paid all of it so is there a transfer of ownership and let's assume we have an agreement and there's no transfer of ownership well we failed this test well that's only one out of five tests we failed this test the second test is a purchase option test what is a purchase option test here what we're looking at is is there and is there an offer for a bargain to be specific a bargain purchase price that's reasonably to be exercised what does that mean let's assume you bought a vehicle a bmw a mercedes a tesla whatever and you leased it for five years and after five years they tell you if you pay three thousand dollar you can keep the car and we all know after five years this car is worth for example ten thousand dollar any reasonable person will exercise this option will exercise this three thousand dollar because it's a bargain purchase no one will say no so if the answer is yes we have a finance lease we're going to say no we don't have a purchase option test so the the answer is no and usually on the exam they use a bargain purchase so you're looking for a bargain purchase not any purchase you need a bargain that's going to entice you to buy it they're giving you the option to buy it because you have the right since you leased it you have the right to buy it so we're going to fail this test let's look at the third test lease term test well we looked at the lease term how many what's the period is the lease term for a major part of the remaining economic life of the lease so simply put you are leasing this asset and this asset has a 10-year economic life how many years are you leasing this asset is it six years seven years eight years simply put if you are looking if you are for the major part of the economic life and how do we define the major part for you as gap they use 75 percent or more so if you're going to have this asset for seven and a half years out of its 10-year life well guess what you technically bought it it's yours you consume most of its economic life so we're going to assume here no we have a six-year life we failed that test if we fail that test it's not a finance lease yet option four present value test well here's what we're going to do we're going to compute the present value of the payments remember the lease will include payments you have to make payments series of payments those payments could be ordinary or annuity depending on uh, ordinary annuity or annuity due or they could they could vary but it's simply you are looking at payment we use the present value computation using a certain interest rate which going to talk about which interest rate do we use in a moment and we add to that any guarantee residual value we'll talk about residual value not included in the payment so we compute the present value so why do we compute the present value we're going to compute the present value and compare the present value to the fair value and we ask ourselves is the present value so let's assume we have an asset with a fair value of a hundred thousand so if you want to buy it today you pay a one hundred thousand what we did is we computed the present value of the payments whether it's ordinary or annuity guarantee residual value blah 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 and we find out the present value is ninety two thousand well ninety two thousand is ninety two percent of the fair value so if the present value greater than 90 percent if the answer is yes we have a finance lease if the answer is no let's assume we find out that it's only 85 percent then you did not really pass that present value test that's the fourth test and we're going to assume here you failed that test so so far we don't have a finance lease yet the fifth and last test is the alternative use test well we ask ourselves is the asset of a specialized nature what does that mean it means 
Once you are done with this asset, it's so specialized. Even if you return it to the lessor, they cannot sell it. They cannot use it for anything else. It's so specialized to your company. If the answer is yes, it's so specialized to your company, we have a finance lease. If the answer is no, the lessor can do something with it, then it's not a specialized nature because they can either use it themselves or lease it again for another company. So if we fail all these tests, if we fail all five, guess what? We have an operating lease. When do we have a finance lease? We need to meet one of them, one of the five, one of the, we need to have one yes. So notice here, we need to have only one and one. Now, what else do we have to know? Let's talk a little bit more about the lease term. The lease term can be extended by the existence of a bargain renewal option. What does that mean? Let's assume Adam can lease a piece of equipment for $1,000 per month for the first two years, then 100 for the following two years. Well, this is practically a bargain renewal option. So, so rather than paying $1,000 per month, you're paying 10%. How many years is this lease term? It's four years. So just know that if there's this bargain, you use the bargain years. Also, we need to be aware of present value test a little bit more. What the first thing is, your payments could be fixed or variable payments. It means it could be the same payment every month, different payments. And the interest rate, it could be fixed or variable interest rate. For the purpose of the CPA exam, usually they keep it simple fixed payment, the annuity could be ordinary or annuity due. And that's why you need to be very familiar, very familiar with the time value of money. If not, go to farhatlectures.com, subscribe and learn about this. Your interest rate could be based on some sort of an index. For example, the consumer price index, which was published today, and we are experiencing an 8.5 inflation and it's rising. So simply put, your payment last year could have been a thousand. This year you have to add 8.5% because the interest rate went up. So your interest payment could be higher because based on the CPI. You have to include the guarantee residual value in your present value, in your present value computation. You have to include any purchase or termination option that are reasonably expected to be to occur. If that's the case, if you have a if you have a purchase option, you have to include it in your present value computation. And which discount rate do we use? Because that's important. When you're doing present value, you have to use some sort of an interest rate. Which discount rate do we use? Well, well, the first thing is the implicit rate of the lessor, if known. What does that mean? It's how much is the seller, is the lessor charging us? Assuming we know this, assuming we know this, this is the interest rate that we use to compute the present value. Let's assume we don't know this information. Well, we use then the incremental borrowing rate. What is the incremental borrowing rate? The incremental borrowing rate is what rate do we get charged if we go if we walk into a bank today asking them to asking them to borrow money to buy this piece of asset? Well, how much will the bank charge based on our credit rate? credit history, liquidity, risk, so on and so forth. How much will they charge us? Well, they charge us 8%. We use 8%. First, the implicit rate. If we know this, that's great. Not, it's the incremental borrowing rate. What should you do now? Go to farhatlectures.com, work, multiple choice, true, false exercises. In the next session, we're going to start to look at actual examples that deals with finance leases, operating leases. This is an important topic. Whether you are a student or a CPA candidate, don't shortchange yourself. Subscribe. I can help you learn the material. It's an investment in yourself. Good luck and study and stay safe.